The can crusher is one of the two hydraulic activities in the determining and defining the criteria unit. The materials for both the can crusher and hydraulic arm activities will ship together. The corrugated plastic, hot glue guns, nails, and twine are all for the hydraulic arms and won't be needed for this activity. Here are the only materials you will need to build the can crusher, besides the water. Since the materials are being combined using bolts and nuts, they can easily be taken apart and reused again and again. The spacers don't affect how the can crusher works, they just prevent this activity from accidentally turning into a hand crusher. You can add them to each corner or put a few extra in one corner. The O-rings keep the syringes in place, but you will need to adjust them throughout the process. Since we want to be able to reuse the materials, we don't want to use something permanent like glue. I would suggest using around 8 inches for the length of the tubing, but it doesn't matter as long as you keep the sections all the same length. Try to get a clean, flat cut on the ends of the tubing. This will help it stay attached to the syringes. The adapters screw on the ends of the syringes and help keep the tubing in place. I like using plastic shoe boxes for my students to keep their supplies in, and they double for a convenient water bucket. After you've used the kits a time or two, you may need to trim the tips of the tubing if they start to loosen up and no longer want to stay on the adapters. Students will come up with their own solution for attaching all the syringes, but you can give them some hints along the way. For this example, I'll start with connecting two syringes together using a teeth, and then I'll connect the other two sets of syringes together using another teeth. After that, I'll add a tube to each of these sets and connect those two sets together with a third T. One last piece of tubing will help me connect the syringe I will use to control my can crusher. When it comes to filling up the syringe system and the tubes with water, I let my students figure out the best way to do it. I will give them a brief demonstration on how to get the air bubbles out. This can usually be done by flicking it a little bit and letting it shake up to the top of the tube so you can push the air back out. Air can easily compress inside of the tubing system, so it's important to work out as much air as possible before you get started. The work from your control syringe is being divided across the four other syringes in your system. So we start experimenting with a smaller syringe and then eventually moving up to a bigger syringe, like a 60. Students will find that this works a lot better. You'll still have to fill the syringe up again with water, but you'll be able to crush the can. After building the system, I usually spend at least a full class period, if not two, allowing my students to just increase the efficiency of their system. Once you and your students are satisfied with how your system works, you can recycle the can and reuse all the parts for the can crusher.